you did mention that he was putting on a military shorts, right? Trouser, Trousers. Yeah. Can you please describe him? He's a tall man. Is there any distinct future that you can name that will make us have a mental picture of who this person is? Well, no. Apart from the person entering, asking you whether, we well, asking the lady whether you have, you are complying with whatever she is asking you. Did you hear anything else that would make you recognize any of the people that were in that room? Sorry, can you repeat the question for me? Apart from the man that entered asking the lady if you are complying with whatever she was asking you, did they say anything that will make you recognize who they were? No. After you were inter un interrogated, can you please tell us what happened? I was later grabbed by that same man who picked that camera and taken to the treasure room. Can you please describe what you refer to as the torture room? The confinement area where we were beaten. You did mention earlier that the place where you were interrogated was the first building on your right when you entered into the NIA. Can you describe where you were taken to be tortured? This man just grabbed me from where I am sitting, then he turned back and went this way around. And what happened when, you t when he took you? When he took me there, they stretched me on top of a table. They pour water on me. You mentioned this man grabbed me and took me there. That is one individual. Now, when he took you into that room, how many people were in that room? I was blindfolded before I get to that place. But through the image, I can see they are around 20 or more. You mentioned being blindfolded. What was used to blindfold you? Uh, they have a scarf, form of scarf that they use to tie people's head, but they use my own hair tie to f uh, tie my face together with my head. At what point were you blindfolded? Uh, immediately he grabbed me before we left the room. He just took the hair tie and tied my face. The same, was it the same man that took you inside, that took your hair tie to blindfold you? Yes. When he blindfolded you and led you into that room, can you please tell us what happened? I was stretched in t on top of a table. They were pouring water on me. I cannot breathe, neither to move. So some of them hold my hands, some of them hold my leg legs, and some started beating me up. Just so that um, we'll reach the wider audience, Mr. Chairman, um, I want to ask if the witness can continue her evidence in Mandinka so that the wider audience will get to get a better picture of what she's saying, given that it's about a human rights violation that occurred. Maybe we'll give the wider audience a chance to also listen to what happened to her. Um, Ms. Jawara, are you comfortable with 
continue in your evidence in Mandinka? It's okay, yes. Thank you very much. Fine, that's okay. Um, uh, Council, you may continue. If that's okay with the witness, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll just give um, time to the interpreters to switch. Well, thank you very much. Um, so we'll start from the point where you were in the room and you were blindfolded. And, you, and you'll start from narrating from that point in Mandinka. You can go ahead, please. When I was blindfolded and taken into the room, I was stretched on a table. Some held onto my hands, others held, held onto my legs. They continued the beatings from there. Before the beatings, they started pouring water on me until I nearly fainted. Uh, and then they continued with the beatings. The beating, do they, they don't choose. They can beat me at any part of my body. Mm -hmm. They were beating from my head to the other parts of my body. They beat me up to the point when they were satisfied. That's the time when they took me to the room where that panel was seated. You mentioned that they poured water on you before they started beating you. What was the temperature of the water they poured on you? What was the temperature of the water they poured on you? What was the temperature of the water they poured on you? It was cold. The cold you you were referring to is it freezing cold, as in from the fridge, or was it normal cold water from the tap? Well, only God knows where it's from, but it was cold. You said you were being beaten everywhere on the part of your body. Yes. Could you feel what they were using to beat you? Could you feel what they were using to beat you? Well, as my eyes and head were tied up, but it looks like they were using a baton on me because it was something very strong. You did also mention that your eyes were tied. How yes. about your nose? Were you able to breathe freely by virtue of the cloth that was used to tie your eyes. Because Well, how they tied it was very strong. In fact, it came up to uh, the point of my nose and they tied it behind my head. Well, to breathe was very difficult for me. They went on beating, but however the beating was intense, this knot was unable to be untied. They kept on beating me with the uh, uh, knot tied around my head and uh, uh, around my head. The water that you said 
that was poured on you? Was it poured on only your body? How about the other parts of your body, like your head? Ako e jio mbo e kawanya. Abfuta te balo dula bela makere e kabo e kumoto fukata e balo be kamba mfu a jio dan te balo mintole. Jio ni mfara na bongo e wati janeta janika liparo kumasi. The pouring of the water took a long time before the beating started. So in the beginning, they poured water on you and waited for a while. Uh, and then the water stopped and waited. There was no waiting after they poured water on me until they were satisfied that my whole body was wet. That was when the beating started. You did tell us earlier in your evidence that the day you were arrested, you were wearing trousers. Were you wearing the same trousers when you went to the NIA? No. What were you wearing? Then? When I was going to the NIA, I was putting on a wrapper. And where did you get this wrapper from? I get the wrapper from an inmate. I was borrowed a wrapper by one of the inmates from the prison when I was coming. As at the time they were beating you. What Was your wrapper still on? We are the hanim be wofa no be la sitrimba. Lipari following. The first beating. We are the wofa no ni mbemba lang hakilo e At that time, I can recall I was still on the wrapper. Very briefly, lipari follow botal. But after the first beating. What time ole yenati o pane rumo nyinto. That was when I was brought to the panel room. Uh, My apologies. For how long did that beating last? It was a long time. Can you estimate how long you were lying there and being beaten? What on in Jam Fatale Bri Family Liparo Kefoya Jacunimbuka Mamanu Abuka Fenkeno Tumole Yam Fai Duma? The beatings took a long time. It was until they realized that this guy was not making any movement that was when I was pushed down. Bri Yam Fai Duma Yam Kuruntule. When I was pushed down, I was being dragged from Potasha Panel Room into until I got into the panel room. Panel room one into ngamoja ma bal taraje. At the panel room, I found many people. Kaburi yani ningkaro kuma simbuka diamuno. When they started questioning me, I was unable to talk. You mentioned that after they've beaten you for several times, you were not able to move. You were pulled away from the table and thrown aside. At that point, can you tell us the injuries he had sustained from that beating? He was beaten. At that time, many parts of my body suffered cuts. Uh, in a time five duma. I was then thrown down. Amanke ko yansika le injindi yam file. It's not as if they carried me from the table and brought me down. I was thrown away, thrown down. Between a time kurun to kan samba ubunga nyungko no kata nyinin ka koteke. And then I was dragged to that room to be questioned again. Yeah. Before you were dragged to the questioning room, did they remove the blindfold from your face? Kabirim 
Yeah, fitting. It was when I got to the door, that was when it was untied. Between that and Bundi, yes, Cindy. Then I was taken inside and made to sit. At that time, I was unable to sit, I was unable to do anything. Then I fell. And so they took a camera. And then they, they forced me to sit down again. I used to hear people speaking. But I was not able to see them or even to uh, realize what was going on. But I hear voices and I hear them questioning. The same questions are the ones that they continued asking. They were asking me who I and who are you involved in this that I should name them. And then they followed me trying to find out if lawyer Dabo is aware of what was happening. I was not able to hear them but uh, to, to realize uh, what was being said but I kept telling them that he had nothing to do with what was happening. The panel that um, you were brought before I understand that you said um, you were not very conscious then. But can you recall how many people were seated there? They were many people. And the questioning also, they will be asking you questions almost at the same time. Do you know if the panel that was questioning you, do you know whether they were all NIA operatives or whether they were from other security outlets? I am not I do not know if some of them could have come from other security outlets, but my belief is that most of them were NIA officers. You also mentioned that you were being questioned and asked about who had planned the demonstration. Apart from those kind of questions, did they ask you any other type of questions? At that time, perhaps some other questions that they were asking, I wasn't aware. But there was a subsequent questioning that happened while I was admitted at the hospital. You mentioned that you were taken immediately from the torture room before the panel. At that point, was it visible to the panel members that you were be tortured? All of them were aware. Because at that time, the condition that we were in, anybody within their right senses, if you should see a human being in that condition, you will know that something happened to this individual. Because they brought me and they brought Fatou Kamara. And I think there was a video which was also in the possession of uh, some lawyers. Even if um, a lot of it was erased, 
bare dolfin ti tal i think uh, some of that video was out in the public so it was quite visible to the members of the panel then that you were tortured but amunta senyata la kweto o panelo mulu maleko atel mu molleti menul lipa ke tajireya ha yes you also mentioned Fatou Kamara. Yeah, Fatou Kamara fana na kumo. Do you know what happened to her? Foya la na menkita o fana na bang. Ah, bari nka nka wuri kama moyle. Yes, because at that time I used to hear screams. Adungo wuro ni mu Fatou Kamara kamolti. And the scream was the voice of Fatou Kamara. Eh, biri ya na tena fana nte besiri ndamendo. And when she was brought where I was seated, that was where she was made to rest on her back there. When I touched her, I then realized that this was a woman. And the groans which were coming from her. Because Nogai was more built than all of us. Adum biring kata NIA na teman teranyuka. And while we were going to the NIA, we were rent together. Wala tina biring wajedronga langko fat kamera lem. So that was why when I saw that, I knew that that was photo camera. Thank you very much, Madam Witness, Mr. Chairman. I can already see that it's time for our first break. Maybe this will be a convenient time to. Stop and then proceed after the break. Lawyer, ko ayajelo ko na daha follow watu sitale. Watu asibete ya jang na mfonyo lo manding for daha follow uchewe bala. Thank you very much, Chairman and Council. We will take a 30-minute break and come back at 12 noon. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you. Council, are we ready to continue? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Please proceed. Thank you very much. Mr. Osher, can you kindly bring in the witness? Welcome back, Madam Jawara. Thank you. Hope you had a wonderful rest. Yes. Can we proceed now? Yes. Before the break, you had told us that you were arrested on the 14th of April, 2016. You were taken to the PIU headquarters at Carnifing. Um, later, you were taken to Mile 2 Central Prison. In the middle of the night, you were transported to the NIA. Suto tema yali bundi je yali samba ena ela subato. Where you were interrogated. Dama yali dia mundi kali nyinika. And later tortured. Okola inatali lipa kali tlimbalia. You narrated how you were tortured. Yes, atali yete tajire ya nyamini. Stating that they had poured water on you. Yenyu mfuko yijobongi kang. While you were blindfolded. Ondo wa atari yenyi asidi. And several men beat you up. Ndunke jamaa nata kafu nyoma keilipa. And later presented you before the a panel. Ukola lo ye samba omo jamaa panelo nyati limula. And while you were before the panel. Biribe yo panelo nyati limula. You were being asked several questions. Ibe nyininka kanu nyininka kuma jamaala. And it was quite visible that you were tortured. Andung meme mbije akweta leko ye te tajire yale. You also told us about your colleague, Fatu Kamara, and you told us that she was also tortured. <coughs> Can you please tell us what happened after your session with the panel members? Afanya mbitu nsilang, ibiri inyo panelo mulu yinyinkaro kedamimbiro bata alamune nataki. 
I can now recall the first time I was brought to the NIA, the woman who was interrogating me, her name is Fatou Sane. Thank you very much. That was quite a vital information. If I may ask, how did you recall the name of the lady? You know also the way the things are, we were together at the hospital. And during that time, they used to uh, discuss amongst themselves, and we used to hear some of the things they said. Because at that time, they did not believe that we were capable of hearing anything because we were almost uh, between life and death. So sometimes while we were lying down, when they are discussing, we used to pick up some of the things they said. Thank you very much for that clarification. So can you please move on from the time you were before the panel, after that what happened? After they made several attempt, attempts to uh, make me name individuals who were part of the protest and I refused because I knew that we were already in trouble. So it was better that we remained in their hands than to name other individuals. That was when I was removed from there and uh, dragged to another small room. Just before we get into what happened in that room. You had mentioned seeing Fatu Kamara before the panel. How about Langmarong? Langmarondung. Langmarong man na nyala ji. Langmarong did not come in my presence. Ina tantol bondi kang sawundi kote. They took us away and transferred us. The room that they placed you in after you finished with the panel, was it still within the NIA premises? The room is within the NIA complex. When you come out of the, uh, the place of torture, you get into that small room. Were you the only one that was taken into that room? The time that they were taking me there, I was blind, blindfolded. I was the only one there, except for the men that were also there. At what point were you blindfolded? Once I was taken out of the panel room, I was blindfolded again. You told us earlier that before you were earlier tortured, they took your cloth and tied your face with it. How about this time? What did they use to blindfold you? I was blindfolded, but I think it's the same material they used. When you were blindfolded the first time, you were taken into the torture room. Uh, 
What came to your mind when you were blindfolded the second time? Mune nata isondo moko no biriye nyasi ti kote kesi nya fulanjao. Ngamuta kwa sae kata mfale dhoro mbele liparuwe menke ata naka niye nyasi ti kote kesi ngamuta kwa sae mbe wati batu ngola dhoro. Well, I thought that they were going to kill me given the kind of beatings that was meted out to me. This time around, I said, well, I was, it was just a matter of waiting for my time to, to come. So what happened after you were blindfolded and led into this other room? When they took me into that small room, the person whose voice I recognized was Seth Omar Jeng. Because at that time I cannot recognize from people. I just see there are just people as shadows. This Sheikh Omar Jeng you're referring to, who was he? I can you Sheikh Omar Jeng member for Jumalem? I tell him operation commander at the NIA. He was the operations commander at the NIA at that time. Prior to this particular incident, did you know him? I could just nini nko beke la foya lolo nuko toke bang. Honey. No. How come you were able to recognize his voice even when you were blindfolded? Silang, ina ata kango sute nyadi le aduwotu mo inya besiti rinne. She was, he was talking to me with. Abedia mu kanya ning kamfa kangola. He was talking to me with anger. Uh, Abaitan de kana kuita kwa makamu le bebul executive position. He was uh, saying to me, you want to prove to us you are, that you have uh, wisdom, you are man in an executive position. And yet you say that you know nothing about this issue. You mentioned that prior to this particular incident, you did not know Sheikh Omar Jeng. And when he spoke in and that room, you recognized his voice. I just want to know how you were able to recognize his voice given that you did not know him before then. If the, if the council will allow me, I will explain when we uh, reach that uh, part how I got to know him. Very well then. So tell us what happened in that room. That was when he said to me, if you don't speak, these men that are here, all of them, I'll ask them to have intercourse with you. I said to him, I have never been stubborn. I told him that I have never been involved in that type of uh, 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 life. And when I was given to my husband, he found me to be a virgin. And from that, I have never uh, uh, known any other man in my life. They all started shouting and laughing at me. That was the time I fell down again because of intense pain that I was feeling throughout my body. When I came to become conscious, uh, then I was taken back and I was beaten again. But that beating did not take long. While you were in that room, and as the time when Sheikh Omar told you that these he is going to allow these the men there to rape you, were you fully conscious then? Because 
bari ngam min foy wo senegal wo tumole yen kurundu kota ke fintindi bu ngonyum kono well at that time i i, I was semi conscious but sometimes i hear voices and i hear what they used to say bari, but lakta ñu senegal la ma kalamuta yen kafu ñoya damen I want to make it clear when they were raping me I was not conscious. No. I want to make this clear. Mm -hmm. It has never came to my notice that I got raped. Oh, abita mm -hmm. Very well. So as at the time you were in that room with those men. Akwato me bo bunko no ni wokewol. Were you conscious throughout that period? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? Were you aware of the things you were doing? You are either able to tell or not able to. But who am I alone? Who have learned in your life? Who am I like? Can I try to be in the midst of the world? Who am I to turn my eyes away from the world? But if it comes to things like uh, your life, if, if for instance somebody puts a knife on your throat, you will be able to uh, be conscious of that. So that was how they came and dragged me away and threw me in another room. And I found Fatou Kamara lying on the ground. The whole of her body was uh, with injury and she was groaning. And then they brought Nogoy. When they placed, uh, when they placed Nogoy, she fell on a part of my body. So, Uri Tankai Koebem Fala. And I screamed and I said to her, to her, you are killing me. That was when she could recognize me and she, she held on to me. While you were in that room, were you tortured at any point? In that room, I was not conscious of what was happening. Nogoy later told me that I thought that you too died. Because Fatu Kamara uh, went into a coma in my presence, but you, they dragged you and just placed you here also. And you were in a very critical condition. Now, where I recognize uh, Omar's uh, voice, I think it was on the second day. I used to hear voices. He used to call me constantly. He used to call me. Uh, after that, when they came and removed me out of the room, I, and I was admitted at the hospital, I was there with the doctor. Say Omar Jen Nataje. Say Omar Jen came there. Nanya elo kola. After I regained consciousness. Kabira dunta dron. When as soon as he came in. Wurita. I screamed. Fat kamara konye lafta le nam de fa kotenge ikamune keteng. Fat kamara said to me, "Do you want them to come and and kill you? What are you doing?" So what you want to do is to try and eat something. That was when he came and said, "Try and eat something." Nal balu bambante bal bulalale. And when you regain strength, you will be discharged. Se Omar fanam fanu buka se no jama jama. Se Omar was unable to go home most times. Baira la miro be momenti wale nyinti kaje kontolo ngakende ya ngabo dulato. Because all he thought was that we will recover our strength and go home. Afanam fanga ya ufonye na kukuma kanga wale besiari mbanta abadi ngol kakili dulabelto. He said that to me personally that there was so much talk in town. Even his relatives used to call him and talk to him about this issue. Nadia mutalungolu. But each day he speaks. Mbuka hanyi mbuka adangu. 
I was not I was always afraid so I never responded to him. Nogoy said to me let's just be here so that we just escape from their grip. Fatakamara too used to advise me on that. But the words he told me in that room. Whenever I see him, those are the words I remember immediately. He was not the only one who used to come to the hospital. But what he told me, the words he told me, this is why I used to recognize his voice, where, his voice wherever I hear him talking. So the words that he told you about allowing the men there, to do whatever they wanted with you. That still lingered on till today. Well, I had his voice distinctly, although I was semi-conscious, but it was frightening. This is why I was still, I am still unable to remember those words. I can recall also another person at the time when the beatings were taking place, and he's called Tamba. They used to call each other, and they call him Tamba. And other names that I cannot recall. Was this during the first beating? I heard Tamba's name during the course of the first beatings. So during the course of the first beating, you had the mentioned name Tamba. Yes. And as at the time they put you in another room, that was when Sheikh Omar Jeng's voice remained in your head, which made it possible for you to recognize him when he spoke at the hospital. Correct? Yes. So when you were taken from that room into the other room, were you fully aware of what was happening around your surroundings? The room that they took me to, where I was together with Nyogoy and the others, while we were at the hospital, Nogoy said, when I relapsed uh, again, she said that the doctors came and took me. My mind was on that, say, on say, Omar calling me, even when I am sleeping in the night, I used to dream of him calling me. You were afraid of this, Sheikh Omar? Yes, I was afraid of this, Sheikh Omar. Yes, I'm afraid of him, of course. And there was this day, I was lying on my hospital bed. And I said to him, Say Omar, you are the head of this place. And you said that you normally don't beat people here. I said to him, for instance, if someone troubles I you and troubled uh, someone outside and that person did not beat up that person outside there but brought the person to your house, I said to him, in the Mandinka setting, how would you analyze that? He said to me, I don't have any power on that. I said to him, now that you have beaten us here and our bodies are all torn, 
uh, blood is oozing out of our body. And we said it to the doctor. And he goes and just buys any medicine he feels like buying and brings it. I said to him, the things that, the things that are on me, they are all destroyed. That was when he gave money to one lady. The woman went and bought two uh, dresses for each one of us. As at the time you were taken to the second room, you told us that during the first torture, you had your wrapper on. As at the time you were being taken to the second room, did you still have your wrapper on there? I regained consciousness while I was at the hospital, but yes, the wrapper was still on me. She had gone because at that time she was the one who was able to uh, go around and bring things for us. After things passed, uh, she went and picked up a uh, the head tie of Fatou Kamara to tie her head because she was complaining of a headache. But at that time, my rapper was with me, on me. Now let's talk about the injuries you sustained as a result of what you've been through. Can you please explain to us the kind of injuries you sustained on your body? There were a lot of injuries on my body. From that time up to this date, I am still healing myself. Well, uh, they took some of the they took pictures of some of the wounds on my body. When the day I came to the TRRC here, I gave it to a lady. I told her to show it to the people here. Because she explained to me that this is going to be confidential between myself and you. Can you please tell us which part of your body had injuries? Well, uh, the wounds are on my back, on my buttocks, uh, up to my thighs, where they, they, they all have this, the marks of these wounds. And up to date, these wounds still pain me. Sometimes I feel itching of the area of the wound, wound. Sometimes the internal part pains me. Sometimes when the pain started again from my neck up to my waist, I don't sleep at I don't, I don't sleep at night. Sometimes one of my legs gets limp even if I stand for some time. All of those things are still troubling me. If I sit down also for a long time, I feel some pain. Sometimes it's very difficult for me. But with the help of Allah, I'm still taking medication time to time. Sometimes ago, maybe two months ago, I was admitted at the uh, main hospital in Banjul on two occasions. If I leave the hospital, I continue to look for medication. Just to help us um, get a picture of the injuries of the three of you when you were put into the other separate room, 
akopuruka kuse nungu soto alibalajato labara mo to biri ya li mo sabo bula uo bundo kono I understand you said that you were semi-conscious then ye nyumfoko wato soto nda otembo amunta ibe keturi mulu nkele but you did clearly recognize Fatu Kamara there bari ya Fatu Kamara woken sute jele and you also saw Nogoi there andu ya Nogoi fananje bungo kono je biri ya nati can you please tell us the injuries that they had on their bodies faisa fono nye wulu fanalu baramulu menu ketela while you were in that room faisa fono nye baramulu menu keta wulu fanala birale be nyoka ngu bungo kono fo yulu fanali jele bang ila baramulu nate sutele birimbe nyoka loptano to i came to see their wounds while we were together at the hospital fat kamara fanan abulo jam faratale nga balo fanan baramo bije fat kamara she had a wound at her hand and also the her body was also injured adun tenate be ka yelo sumunale nu because at that time we were all discharging blood no goy fana yala nyum bulu teman ko katile ya ngajile fatata kuma no goy tous one of our fingers was broken ala nyi cinq ondi ngodo fana mbije ko kabri ba nyi nin ka Briali pay batata one of our toes also she said after they questioned her until they were tired ako mimba nyi nin ka ka ngaya sama to tala ya lo asin kon de kam fa teta she said that the one that was uh, interrogating her uh, stepped on her uh, toe with uh, with his boot and uh, it broke ngon singo nyi tara ta tafuri nga bulle folu ngome bem bulala mayel tu she had to tie up uh, uh, her, her toenail in a cloth until the day they were released from the hospital adungala nyi nya fa sol fa nan jambe ti nyaatale nu and uh, some of the nerves around her eyes were also infected ata katare dani la ja ka foye ko alima ko nga nyi jaara janni ka finti she keeps on begging them help me to heal my eyes before i leave this place e pat kamara se kam fa fat camera becomes annoyed sometimes aka fayta mam miro soto and tells her you you don't think properly ñun yeñu ko wolu minu keete lay teke mira ka kende ya jang all the things these people did to you so you are thinking of getting healed here bari wotu mo cheikh omar kam wol ni nele nal kende ya ta mbal bulala le because at that time cheikh omar was fooling them telling them that if you get well you will be released no goy dun ka te malu talani wo nya daye finti molu kan surtout ani minu man tara ka fukili be iba jube la nya dil an no goy used to say that she will feel ashamed to go out with those thing those wounds on her face especially she doesn't want people who are in the different in, in the other parties to see her like that se omar la ngani yo momenti wolem nyinti furunto lu ngatano ko bari ko ya fole ko ngata ko bari mbukata mano mbuka fenke no wala tin na mbukata no mbukata se omar's intention was to see that we went to court because the court wanted us to appear but at that time we could not walk we could not do anything so we couldn't go to the court say wo kumol men be siari ngaka wala tin na kam wol nene pour ngam fam bambande but the pressure that was on him that was what was uh, the reason why he used to encourage us to strengthen us so that we we could uh, heal it quickly how long did you spend at the nia before being taken to the hospital ali wati jille ke nia janni bal sambal hospital kabrin tol dun ta nia singona na mam finti banta loptano ni mu bolti membe nia kono je since uh, we got into the nia we never came out the hospital that we went to was inside the nia soon after the beating how long did it take you for you to be get for you to be treated birin li paro botala ay wati jelle ta janni ba la jararo da mutala anta nga men kala muta o leftan la ro kan nga tili konon to le keje what i recall on that hospital bed we had 9 days there e ila security la kunti yo do nata one of their security chiefs came nga mera tomu james leti I think his name is James. Ako yem fintin di en samba bamba dinka. He said that they should remove us and uh, take us to Baba Dinka. You did tell us that um from the other room <coughs> the <coughs> three of you were packed into another room. Yem fonyen ko briali fintin di bundo kono. 
kutumolo inatali mosa bosa mba kali landi nyoka mbundo kon. I just wanted to know how long it took before they attended to your wounds while you were in that room. Akala fta lonale, ay wati jeleta janning itilba damu tala purka tilu mako ijara rola wotumo alibewo bungo kono jee. Ntema ntara nkala mawo watu bari nogo ya fole ko. I was not uh, in control of my faculties at the time, but Nogo said that. They said that uh, she said they were just sitting and then they noticed that I fell. So she said she did all she could, but nothing could happen. And then that was the time she screamed. They came and I think they wanted to give me water, but she said to them, leave her alone. Do you want to kill her? It was after that uh, Nogoy said these things to me while we were at the hospital. Because at the time, Fatou Kamara was also experiencing what I was going through. While you were in that room, were you given any food? At that room was downstairs. When they beat us, they just threw us there. So I don't know what happened there. Will I be correct to say that from the time they pulled you out of the second interrogation room, you were unconscious till the time you went to the hospital within the NIA itself? What Nogo said to me was that I was there for three days and I did not open my eyes. For three days you were unconscious. Tilisaba amunta imam boy fankala mai botumo. And during that three days, o tilisabo dungu chao kono. Did they administer any medicine to you? That is, if you know. Ako four. O tilisabo kono ye bori di la leba natra isi bo akala ma. Mbota min kala ma wale mu ika mem pompi molukang. What I came to know was what they used to pump into people. Because they said they were going to inject, inject me, but I refused. But uh, given the way that my body was swollen, there was something that they used to spray on me. So that uh, that could uh, diminish the pain. You also told us that you were discharging, one of your injuries was uh, the discharge of blood. When did that start? Well, what I came to know is that I was bleeding outside externally but I also I realized that I was urinating blood when did you start urinating blood what did you malo ya damuta ka yelo jalamuta during the whole of time not what would run the cattle killer not for not a mile to cut off a carry jama at the time that I was in that hospital that was what was happened to me before I went to the to to mile two and that continued for several months Let me just recap what you've said so that you can confirm it. After your interrogation before the panel, you were taken into a room blindfolded and you were not aware of 
anything that happened in that room. From then on, you were unconscious for three days. It was later you found yourself in the hospital. Is that a correct narrative of what happened? I was not uh, fully conscious, but when I hear some voices, I can understand what was said. Can you tell us where that hospital was located in the NIA premises? First of all, when you were looked at, remember NIA was so connected. NIA was so connected. I've never been to the NIA until that night that I was taken in. And uh, those that took me, uh, we put, we, I was in their middle and they were close, close by me. You could not even raise your head. But as we were going in my own thinking, that the hospital would be within the middle of the NIA complex. At that hospital, who attended to you? Can you recall who? Jumale etopotoje foi hakilo sibula mari lalaba. The doctors that were there at the hospital, one of them's name is Fatu Dabo and Lamin Langsanyan. There is also one uh, girl, they call her Saroba. She too is an NI officer, but she was at the School of Nursing. At the hospital, did the doctors tell you the cause of your bleeding? The doctor that was uh, attending me was Lamin Lamin Langsanyang. When you tell him what was uh, pain in you on the prescription, he will just write body pain. And so they will go and buy that. But these two women, Fadabo and Saroba, but they showed me their intentions and all their efforts. They did all of that very well. Because she was from Kanilai, in my thinking, uh, she probably she did not want to say exactly what the situation was. But the in, her intention and the efforts that she did for me in the, during the course of our work, I, I have seen that. And Fatu Dabo too is the, the same. But in that hospital, some used to come there. They will never allow them to enter. Because in that hospital, even amongst themselves, they used to hide from each other. Some people are working there, but when you ask them their names, they will give you a different name. There are some people working there who were working in fear. Because the suspicion was that some of the junglers who were recruited were brought there. And they didn't know what type of work those people were there to do. The junglers used to uh, uh, torture people, and after the torturing, they at the hospital, they just take care of them and try to treat them. And the nurse is working at that hospital. Just as I said, Fadabo and Sariba were really in fear. 
Sanyang attendu ka kuwa bekele. But Sanyang does everything with them. Because he's working at the Serekunda General Hospital. But he is also an NIA officer. If uh, uh, the NIA commit any any torturing in torturing in secret or whatever, he is the guy who who who, who takes care of those people to treat them. As at the time you were at the hospital in the NIA, what or maybe looked down to NIA? Did you feel any pain while when you urinate? Because you mentioned that you do discharge blood when you urinate. Ako fo ebi jetu mo men fo dimi mo ke muta lebang what or men ikoeka yelo jala muta. Dimo o kanyu o mambo. Ben mfele drone nin di mole musuto tili mboka sino mboka lano mboka fenkeno Well I was in pain constantly day and night sometimes I don't sleep I, I cannot stand I cannot stand I cannot lie down I I was just in pain continuously Mole kanku people used to bath me Mole ka wulindi people take me up to sit down coming up when I'm in no way drone na kangunu mano do mandi as I said, Nogoy sometimes is the person who used to crawl. But in turn, fat camera baby no push push all the But for herself and fat camera, we are all sitting in wheelchairs. Sitting on a wheelchair, you say, meaning you were not able to walk at that time. Ako katara push push o kono wale mnyindi ko watu ya albuka tamu no alifai. Ha. Yes. For how long were you not able to walk on your own? Ali wati jelle ke jannali be wulno la katama ali faye. Halume nga katanta mata no faye woleng biringa mo eko eko mbita la kotle. The day that we tried and walked a little bit was the day that we heard that we were going to appear in court. Wolum police ol na taje kan na statement ota. That day the police uh, came there to take our statements. Was statement of our detainee a la dronalo. In fact, that statement, the manner in which it they were given, only God knows. Was say Omar laying escort room do kono? Because it was say Omar who escorted us to one room. Yeah, in atan na statement ulta. And then they took our statements. Do e nogo e tata, do e fat camera tata. One took nogoes, the other took photo cameras. But if I don't uh, forget, the one who took my own is either Fode Kombosilla or Lamin Kombosilla. Kombosilla. Hani sabi do kola police Up till now, he works with the police. Adunga statement on yintale amansilla. And he took this statement without fear. Akonyo kofengo fengketa alafo. And he said to me, whatever happened. Say it. And I have, we have been hearing these things for a long time. And we used to deny them. But say them. Whatever has to happen, let it happen. Uh, he encouraged me to say exactly what happened. But I was scared myself. Because Se Omar was standing over us while they were taking our statements. When we were ready, he returned us back to the hospital. So you were saying that the police officer that personally took your statement was doing it without any form of fear. And he did it according to what the law says that he should do. Is that correct? He did it that way. And that was not the end of it. When we were taken to Makati, they brought one man. Some changed their statement. They said they took other people's statements in mile two. When, in essence, they were taken at the NIA. 
But this man stood and said that they took my statement at the NIA. That was the time when I think the State Council he asked him, how could you say that? Do you know Father Jawara? He said to, to the State Council, if you want, I could go until, and, uh, until I hold her by the hand. He wanted to come down. They said to him, no, uh, leave it. You've told us that you spent about nine days at the hospital that is at the NIA. After spending those nine days at the hospital, what happened to you next? After that, they removed me and uh, took me to Bambadinka. Can you please describe this Bambadinka you're talking about? Can you Bambadinka mem fo jebe nyadi le je kala ngofo nyembang? Bambadinka sel seli ngolu ka wolel yele yele fo ena futa dula la bangom. Bambadinka is a place where you open several doors uh, cell doors before you eventually get in there. And once you get inside there, you are not able to hear anything to hear. The time when we used to hear uh, noise, for me, it depends on the nature of Allah. The more twenty-five dollars. That happens only when they come and jump in there and say, "Here is your food," and they provide us with twenty-five dollars for our food. Ni lafte ta san jio la wala drink wala lafte ta san namin. If you want, you can go and buy water or a drink or whatever you want to buy. During the time you were at the NIA, did you have any visitors from outside? No. The twenty-five dollars that they were giving you for lunch. What? Where did they expect you to buy the food from? When they come, they just tell you the news that this is the amount of the money available. Then they will uh, put it together and go and buy food and bring it for you. If you say you want water, they will also buy water. So the twenty-five dollars being given to you is personally from the NIA coffers, correct? Amunta yo muani lulo me kafali amunta wakak bonang NIA fongo la kodo le kono. Ha. Yes. The Bambadinka cell you're referring to? I hear Bambadinka cell or Menfonia. Were you the only one that was put inside the cell, or did your other colleagues join you there? Yeah, the man is somebody for in Indian Kafunio Dolu, I'll be a somebody. Bambadinka didn't know any fat camera be when you can. I, with Fato Kamara and Nogoi, we are in Bambadinka together. Can you please describe the interior of the cell? Bambadinka cell o kono abenya me uje Kenya fonyembang. Sponge wale landi je dron. There was only a sponge. Alkela wale kan. And that is where we used to lie on. Huo do fanambi je juan kono le watoti. There is also one uh, hole which is uh, the uh, restroom. Juan kono ni salji mutoka ke watoti. That is where we used to take care of our personal hygiene and also to perform ablution. What was the proximity between the toilet and where you were lying down? Can you remember who John Kongo ning Allah la rulate ma? Can you be nyadi la jamfara le fordu mi be nyobalan? 
The space was small, just uh, just like uh, this is where the, way the restroom was, and we used to lie here. Did the place have any ventilation? Honey? No. How did it feel being in that tight spot where the toilet is not far from where you lie down? Well, we just uh, took it the way we found it. Can you please describe the smell of that particular place? You know that is the that is the place where people used to be taken into. And uh, most of the time, it's only people that have uh, been uh, well eaten that used to be taken there. Uh, They've never come to change the bed sheet or anything. Or to say that there is anything by way of personal hygiene which we could use at the toilet. We were in that situation just like that. And uh, that was where we were taken from to the court. <coughs> when we, uh, our health uh, began to improve. How did you come to know that that is the place referred to as Bambadinka? I thought about where we were from and uh, we, where we were, and uh, I have never seen a cell like that. Because you opened several doors before you eventually got there. That was why when we got there, I came to the conclusion that this is Bambadinka. Can you recall how many days you spent in that cell? I cannot recall, but we spent a considerable time there. You were arrested on the 14th of April 2016, right? Yes. On that very day, you were taken to Mile 2 prisons, correct? Yes. Yes. On the day you arrived at Mile 2, that very night you were taken to the NIA premises, correct? Uh. After you arrived at the NIA, you were tortured on that very day, correct? Correct. Yes. Ah. Yes. You were also taken before the panel on that day, correct? It could be the second day because at that time. Mm -hmm. It was not yet uh, daylight, but we were in at the, almost at the tail end of the day. After the panel, that's when you were taken into the other room where you were unconscious for three days. No, it was where Sir Omar treated me in that room, and it was after they took us 
uh, from there that they threw me in this room where I met Father Kamara and Nogai. So already before then you had spent about a week at the NIA premises. And when you knew what was going on, you were able to get to the NIA. You knew what was going on? Before you were taken to the hospital, you had spent about a week at the NIA, correct? It was the morning after the beatings, just as the sun was rising. I think after they saw the condition of our bodies, that was when they took us to the hospital. So all in all, calculating that you said you spent about nine days at the hospital? I, I am not sure it could be nine days or even less than that, but in my own estimation, it was uh, nine days, and it was after that that we were taken to Bambadinka. So after you were released and taken to court, can you tell us what happened? When we went to the court uh, during the uh, first hearing, the lawyer wanted to take our statements. Prison officer and PIU officer, baby, sitting The prison officers and the PIU, we are all uh, sitting with us. Manna statement or dino left so we could not give our statement uh, the way we wanted it. And we could not also show our injuries to the lawyer. The uh, court now uh, gave order that we be taken to mile two. Uh, after uh, that was uh, said, they did not listen to them. They instead took us back to the NIA. I think it is almost about two times that the court ordered that we be taken to mile two, but they will never agree. The day that they took us to, they took us out uh, to mile two. We were on our own in mile two. I cannot say that all prison officers are wicked. There were good ones amongst them. Those that uh, we have seen their assistance and also they also empathize with uh, our uh, situation. But everyone ran away from us. Because people were scared. So we were on our own. When our people come to visit us, some of the opportunities that the other prisoners had, we did not have. The time that they used to give them, they don't give us the same amount of time. That was at the first time we were there. And also your family, just as where you are now seated, they will be seated there and uh, you will be here. And you will be greeting each other. And then they release them and tell them to go home. And when they uh, leave, then they will take you back to the cell. Because they never want uh, to take you inside the cell in the presence of your relatives. And when you are discussing with your family members, the police officers used to sit down and be listening. And they don't even allow you to shake their hands, much more to get close to them. 
sorry for interrupting you. You've already told us that you were married at that time. Did you have any kids? Yes, at that time I had three children. How old were your children? At that time, my eldest child would be nine years. My second child was, at, uh, was six years old. My third child, at that time the child was not yet four years old. Did your children come to visit you while you were at Mile 2 prison? Did you come to visit your children while you were at Mile 2 prison? Each time my husband comes there, he used to be very sad. He made all at attempts. The children used to disturb him that they would want to see me. One day he prepared them, dressed them up, and came to court with them. Uh, so when they came that day, the court procedure, the, the proceedings did not take place. Uh, people came and uh, told me about uh, their, uh, gave me their information that uh, the situation, the, the, the this disturbing situation that the children were in, including him, the saddest thing about is it was this. The following day, he came with the uh, intention of seeing me. He came to see me at the prisons, first of all. They said to him that it was time that they were going to the court. He went to the court as well. As he was coming out, he too was arrested. So it means now the children are now in hardship and he too is in hardship. But there was a lot of uh, uh, talk, a lot of pressure and uh, he was eventually released. Do you know for how long he was um, detained? For how long he was detained? He spent one day with them. But people were discussing his issue on social media a lot and uh, they ended up releasing him. But he was dismissed from his work. Uh, the children were there. And at that time I was not engaged in any uh, paid job. All uh, my things were under his uh, control. Where was he working? He worked, he worked at the KMC. And he was dismissed from that job. I was in prison and I got the information. And when I confronted him with the information, he said, no, that did not happen. And if I also inquired about the children, he used to tell me that they were okay. But if I asked him to bring them along, the prison uh, rules did not allow for that. So there was difficulty on us, on all these uh, sides. Can you please tell us what eventually led to your release? Just as uh, I stopped the discussion where he, she got into the issue of my husband, 
you were asking me about the difficulties I encountered in prison. Uh, also in the prison, when we request for food, when you have a visit, they will give you your food, you will take into your cell, which you would share with other prisoners. But there is a place where they uh, identified for our relatives that if they should bring food for us, they should place the food there and then depart for home. And that happened after a lot of uh, trial and pressure by, our, by the lawyers before that was able to be allowed to happen. I was sitting in the prison and they came and called me and they said you have a visitor. I was hopeful that perhaps now that now things will change, I will be able to see my children. But when I came out to answer to uh, to answer they said to me your food has arrived it's down there and they told me the place at that time I was at the remand doing I asked why was the food not brought inside they said to me you are going to eat it there then I said to them then uh, tell them to uh, return with the food I said to them, where I am, I am just waiting for time. Because I have gone through all kinds of con uh, conceivable uh, difficulty. And it is not as if I killed someone, that is why I was brought here. And uh, I have not yet been condemned by law. My food, why is it that even the inmates, their food uh, is brought in and you say that mine would not come in? And at that time, I was experiencing a lot of pain. I was unable to walk. I said to them, return back the food. At that time, my family uh, members had already returned home. When they realized that the food that they used to bring for me does not usually get to me, and when they asked me in court, I told them. The lawyers got up and made those attempts again. That was when we were all, they were, they, 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 it was allowed for our food to be brought inside so we could take it to ourselves. But they did not give up. We went to court and returned. I overheard the police discussing amongst themselves that the interior minister said that we be taken to Makati. Within the group, they chose 11 of us, if I can, if I can recall. According to what they said, there were some people that were released who accepted some of the terms and conditions that they had set to, uh, uh, to uh, assure them that we, we are going to desist from engagement in political affairs and they did not know anything about what was uh, this issue. According to what I heard in their discussion, they set those ones free and they took us to Makati. Did they tell you about those terms and conditions prior to those other ones being uh, released? What happened, they did not tell me, but uh, I, this was uh, in their mind that we were the masterminds of the whole thing.
So they selected 11 of you out of the lot. And sent you to Makati. Yeah. Yes. Can you tell us what happened upon your arrival in Makati? Makati Makati, despite all the hardship in mile two, it is still not yet to the ex to, to the level of Makati. Because in mile two, you could uh, get up and uh, walk around. And you could see one, two or three people close to yourself. But in Makati, they took us inside a cell. They gave us a chamber port where we could uh, release our, our, we could attend to our um, personal needs. And in Salimutobe. And uh, where we perform abolition, all of that we do on that same chamber pot. When you are ready, you pick it up and uh, empty it. We used to uh, spend the night with that pot. And I was there with some elders. Uh, when we are ready in the morning, I used to collect it and empty it. The people that were transported at Makati. How many of you were female? The three of us, the three old women, all of us went. That would be yourself, Fatu Kamara and Nogoi. Yeah. Yes. All three of you were you placed in one cell? Yes. Yes. Apart from the chamber pot, can you please describe the cell for us? Wo chamber pot o kola wo fansurura randinkira o kola fo cello nyimbe nyadi mo. Cello nyimbe be kotori ne pumbol si kolo ekang eka silandiri kamo belijiye. The cell is so bad that, uh, and it's a very old place. You have maggots around, and you see a lot of frightening things inside that cell. And the windows were also not good. One day, there was an owl which came into the room. Fat Kamara was shouting and reciting uh, uh, a verse from the Quran. We saw her fall down. An officer was called in. I don't know whether her, uh, her, his name was Sana. There were many officers there. He is the man who came and took it and threw it out. And also at Makati, uh, gunmen used to stand around that cell. When we are in that small room, there is a parlor where you have the officers and the other people. If you want to go and empty uh, 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 your chamber pot, even if it is daytime, you have to call them for them to come and open the door and you go and empty the pot and bring back the pot. You don't go out. That's where you are always. And also, when we are about to go to the hospital, there I have not gone to the hospital. It was Fat Kamara who once went to the hospital there. When she was going to the hospital, she went with an escort of four men. They were all armed with guns. And in prison guard. Plus the prison guards. The following day was the day I was supposed to go to the hospital. They told me. I told them, no, I don't want to go. They, they said, no, you have to go. I told them my body has improved. 
At Makati, sometimes, even if you are sick, they don't even think of taking you to the hospital. One day, the fat camera fell down. A police officer took, him, took her on his back and went out with her to look for a vehicle. There was no vehicle, but later they tried to take her to Bansang. Nogoy also, the same thing happened to her. They said when Nogoy was in the hospital, whoever he sees, she sees, she'll tell them, please tell my people that I am here. Um, my name is Nogo Njai. We are the guys who protested on the 14th of April. That really pained them. They, they said, now, if anybody gets sick, they will ne not take you to the hospital. But the commissioner at Makati was called Bubajata. Every time I hear him warning the officers about the inmates at the, at the, at the prison there. Well, he used to tell them that it is God's decision for these people to be brought here. But be careful of them. He will call them every morning and warn them. And he does the same thing in the evening. But there was one commissioner who was a female. Her name is Anataro. One day, state doctors came there to check us. I was explaining. She just told me to stop what I was saying. I told her, you cannot tell me what to say. I told her, whatever he, I, I want to say, I'll say it. I told her, well, it is left to them. If they want to kill me or treat me, okay. If they don't want to let them leave it. After that, Fat Kamara also appealed. I will uh, appeal to this woman because she also covers herself like a Muslim woman so that they will take out the kemba pot from our rooms so that they will also forgive us to allow us to perform ablution outside. I said to her, don't, don't tell her. She said, no, let me inform her. When she told the lady, what the lady replied to her was that you will remain with this Kemba pot there, it is the law. Fat Kamara told her that you are, you, you, I am under custody. Now you want to take custody of my religion also. Fat Kamara said, God will, God will decide between us. I told her, you, you tell somebody about God who knows about Allah. I told her that the, the reason which brought you here or the person who brought you here will release you when he wants to release you. People committed crimes worse than what we did. Let's leave everything with Allah. That's how we were remaining there. For how long did you remain at the Makati prison? We spent a long time there. When we go to court, the lawyer doesn't turn up. The magistrate just talks by himself. And those representing the government there. Whatever they feel is doing, that's what they do. And they will adjourn it again. When we are going to Mansakonko, we leave the prison at 2 a.m. And the vehicle wasn't in good condition. If you travel with that vehicle and come back, it looks like that was the day when you were tortured. 
Every part of your body becomes so painful that you will not know where the pain comes from exactly. That's how we we've been going to court and back and no lawyer came there. Because the lawyers realized that there was not a single iota of truth in what was going on. They decided to march away and leave the court. When we are called and whatever is said, we don't say anything. We don't tell them it is black or white. That's the way we were there until the day they decided to jail us. But all this trial took place up to the end. I see Sheikh Omar there at all the trials. But I have never seen him at Makati. And one called Almame Manga. If they are going to talk between themselves and Allah, I think they will be able to recognize somebody and they will be able to say something. That's how our things went and that's how it ended at Makati. Nobody was ever allowed to come and visit us or, visit us or bring food for us. Who was this Almame Manga you are referring to? Jumalam Nying Almame Manga Ti Kamem Foteng. Police Olem. There was a police officer. And what was his role? Atela lo Atela do kum muneti nu. What on tebe damen ton kumbuka alomfong abemen kad deni ka koyola dungani kutu black. At that time, I did not know what was happening. He used to be dressed in a white shirt. And uh, the a, black, a black trousers. Hani Makati akana na case no majel. Even in Makati, he used to come to follow up our case. Do you know if he was representing the government in that case? Fire long kati kana mansa kunda toya le laji wo kito to ban. Hang kan kana mansa kunda toya. Yes, he came to represent the government. Can you recall for how long you were detained before you were eventually released? For how long are you waiting for the moment when you must walk on for journey by the border alumen? We carry say you wait in that cage. We spent more than eight months. You were tortured. Yeah, the tajire ya. Your injuries were not properly treated. And you were locked up for eight months. Can you tell us what the physical impact Can you tell us what the physical impact of that was on you? Can you tell us did to my life is a lot. On one side, I learned from it. Because at the time that uh, the difficulties were taking place, there were some that stood by me, but there are others also that distanced themselves from me. I heard that even my children, people were trying to distance themselves from them. And they used to say bad things. Up to the day, if I uh, recall those things, it used to sadden me because I know it isn't my habit that took me to, to, to the prison, not my character. It was just um, trouble that came along. And it could also happen to anyone. It also affected my children's school. Because my first uh, child, my son, uh, what time I school, I mean to honey. 
at that time, the school that he was, I even uh, thought of uh, taking him out from the studies. I used to go to his teacher and say to uh, him, I want him to attend the class. I used to go to his teacher and say to him, I want him to attend Dara, which is why I am taking him away from the studies. I used to go to his teacher and say to him, I want him but because of the child's performance, the teacher will tell me, uh, don't worry, I will take care of his study fees. He usually comes first in his class. But during my arrest, the children were only left with their father and they did not get uh, the help they needed. Uh, some people, truly speaking, they stood by me. But my mother was advanced in age. But my, uh, my husband also was somebody who uh, wants to keep up with the children because he doesn't want to see them unhappy as far as I am not around. Sometimes the children will refuse to go to school. They will insist that they want to come to me and see their mom. That seriously affected my first child. And still it's affecting him. My second child, one day he sat down and cried. And said that somebody showed him a video. Uh, sitting down and looking at it I was crying bitterly I asked him what, what are you crying for he said what I heard is what's making me cry I told him that that video was taken when I was not even aware of it I told him next time if Anybody wants to show you a video, tell him that I won't. Just reviews. So, I saw that it, it gave heart to the child. It gave him courage. My apologies for cutting you. Do you know the content of that video? The video is a video that is victim center. The video, I went to the victim center. That was the day that uh, the place was being inaugurated. It delayed Ibrahim Janko Sise. Called me. I said to him, I am busy today. But he said to me, just come. I want you to come and talk to the women since you are a woman. Since uh, we both uh, got to know each other during the time of the hardship, I said to him, I will come, but I will not speak. But then he encouraged me. So I spoke there. Narrating our experience, but I did not know how that video got out. Up till day, I am I regret, I regret regretful of that video going out. Very model by can against me because people are using it against me. But uh, probably when I get to the end of my statement, I will address that issue. Very well. Thank you very much, Madam Jawara. Madam Jawara. Thank you for answering all of my questions. And thank you for answering them bravely. I'll hand it over to the chairman now.
Mr. Chairman, the witness is yours now. Sayim, Mr. Chairman, Selo Muitalti. Thank you very much, Emma Council. Thank you very much, Honorable Jawara. Chairman, Kwe Anlimbara Council, Inumbara Honorable Jawara. I'm truly sorry that you had to endure so much in the hands of um, uh, uh, officers of this um, uh, state. Akwesi haketu nyingkita balafati banko fangola duku lalu wole tunata soto kake muluti meni alonko ya mantora jawa lekang. To suffer waterboarding. Kabata jitajire ya lai kafume waterboarding wole mkamoti limbali ya ninjiola. Beating. Liparo. And uh, all the forms of um, uh, brutal torture. And in Tajireya, Sila Kotangulumenu Yekela. Was a, a gross violation of your human rights. Umwila Hadamaya Nyanto Tinya Jau Baliti. Truly sorry that this was done in the name of the state. You say Haketu Andunyilioke Kobanko Toyalela. If um, my commissioners have any questions, please indicate. Ako uh, Commissioner Lu Nimmen Yeninka Rosoto is a Yeninka. Deputy, you have the floor, please. Sirantio Nolanko, Deputy Wolebe Yeninkala. Thank you very much, Honorable. Ako Numbara Bake, Honorable. You were hospitalized in a health facility within the NIA. Ye Landi Lubtano to member NIA Fongola San Samokono. Did you have access to doctors or specialists? care when you were for your injuries when you were hospitalized Akobri Fodung Lona Lona Baby the doctors that came were all within uh, the NIA they were all part of the NIA those were the ones that carried out the secret treatment. The fact that you say secret treatment means that you do not have medical documents. I had some uh, documents uh, which they, uh, they wrote uh, body pain. But those are not in my possession. But this uh, female nurse that I said was the one assisting me there. I saw some statements in our file. And I think that that nurse would be an important witness who would uh, who should come here and uh, make a statement. Because uh, she had uh, seen some of the injuries. And uh, she has been there for a long time taking care of uh, uh, people who were injured within the NIA there. Thank you. Akoy Numbara. Thank you very much. Ma, uh, uh, Commissioner Kinte, you have the floor. Commissioner Kinte, you have the floor. Assalamu alaikum. Honorable. I said I was going to ask you so that you could assist us with uh, Bamba Dinka. I said I was going to we had gone there on our tour, but we already met that uh, so many things were already changed. God knows at that time you had a lot of pain and uh, there probably would uh, be many things that you were not observant of. But but you told us that uh, you had to open several doors before you got to uh, Bamba Dinka eventually. How many of these doors uh, did you have to open before you got to Bamba Dinka? I cannot tell you the exact number, but there were several doors that you opened. Then that shows that it could be up to three doors. 
Yes. Nani ni nkaro fulanya ngo iko ni na de ke chupenje. My second question Oje. is you ah. said when they came in they used to jump inside. Mini for ya itandi ko dinkole beje ni na ta ya dal yele ya yele ni futa ta fangoto. Stepole beje ka ji stepola wore ke jolo ne ban pure futa altolo. It shows that probably there was a hole or something or a step where they had to uh, open those several doors and then when they came there they would get onto that step and then jump into the cell. I don't think there was a hole, but that was just the manner in which they did things to frighten you. And when they came in, that was the manner in which they came in. But it is difficult to be inside there and still be able to say exactly uh, the situation of the place, the way it was like. Because where you used to exit from, that place is darkened so that you are unable to uh, recognize the place. Thank you very much. Thank you. If there are, uh, Imam C, you have the floor, please. Imam C, la kanen yinin ka. Alimara, jere jofu nyum lai gerem de la santu chi leral binga leral agmetit bila am. Ako ilumbara bake ye kumo seni andi nyaming aning ye mantoro mentaki. Senti aman bobu, fingen defon mitin bi. Allahu chiamanu aliyo beonke dami. That chairman, where you had that meeting? Mungu sugu sugu ni kisa mugi na yeni yana fadema mugi na wangu mumde fudha. Akoni ya jal findi tati leta tajwa wala bara alikuwa amam fenfenke. If you see that he was not involved, you are the ones who went there and said that he did not involved. He was not involved in the whole thing. Sisi wala la makati wala ena e. Akofu na tayi juu bila makati bangwa la ena e. Did he pay a visit to you while you were at the ena e or while you were in makati? While you were undergoing these difficulties, did he make any attempts to help you in the situation that you were in? No, I did not. I did not see him in Makati. In Makati, neither at mile two. Mr. Chairman. Just to clarify a point here, the chairman is with respect to the Batakungu incident okay. and uh, the incident of uh, arrest and prolonged detention is with respect to the incident of 14th April 2016. Thank you for that clarification. Uh -huh. um, Imam, continue your questioning while you finish. Please finish. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Honorable Jara, if you have any closing remarks to make, please proceed to do so now. Chairman Kornatari, Kumalusutu, Bela Kumo Kumfala, Menna, Sai, Financila, or Kumakangu Itandi. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I just want to conclude by saying those people who are sending me threatening words through audios, SMS, and so on, and they were labeling words against me. I want to reassure them that if this thing has happened to their aunties, sister, mother, among others, what would they feel? I did not ask for this to happen to me, but some evil people decided to snap my integrity from me. But today, I take it all back. I refuse to be a victim, and I'm still sending strong message after all, because I love my country, and I will continue to fight for my, for my right and that of other women. You cannot bring me down. So for that being the case, I'm sending this message to those psycho fan group who are always using abusive language against me, that I should be victimized, Jame should have finished up with me. I think they need to reflect their mind back and think that I didn't went to prison for my crime. I went to prison to f fight for the right of the voiceless, 
to fight for the injustice. So I think the, the TRRC should do more effort to work in consultation with the victim to see that those group of individuals who are using abusive language on the victims, like how can you just come out and say that you were raped by thousands of men, but they should even flush their legs into your ass, which I think is very bad. I think TRRC needs to do more to protect the rights of the victims. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed um, uh, for those um, words and uh, fully endorse um, uh, them. We would um, uh, resume at uh, 2.30, yes indeed, 2.30 or 2.45, one hour break. And uh, um, Council, is that, um, is the uh, uh, next witness ready? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Fine, so we will uh, resume at 2.45. Thank you all very much. And thank you again, Honorable Jara, for coming, and we appreciate um, your testimony. Meeting is adjourned.